Hey guys, even here, so two weeks out of Mr. Olympia, we got a couple of interesting bodybuilding updates and we're gonna start with Nathan the Asha, we got a posing video, but the caption here is what I found interesting, so I wasn't sure if he was gonna do the Mr. Olympia because of his, you know, legal troubles, uh, was he gonna be able to travel to the US? It turns out that he can, but in this most recent update he says that his flight was cancelled, um, from what I can gather uh, from this rant here, it's really hard to, to encrypt this to figure it out what he meant exactly, but basically the flight was cancelled, and uh, he doesn't know when he's gonna be able to travel, what tomorrow is gonna bring, so things seem a little bit uncertain at this point, he says that his coach is not happy with his look because of... I don't know, all the stress, I guess, you can read the caption, he forms sentences in a, in a weird way, I mean, he talks about some of his friends dropping some machine on his knee, he's joking that he's being paid by another pro for his withdrawal from the Mr. Olympia, it, it's hard to understand this joke, at least for me, if you guys can get it, you can <laughs> explain it to me in the comment section, but anyways, let's check out his physique and let's see what Nathan Diasha can do at a Mr. Olympia if he is at 100%. So right off the bat, in my eyes, Nathan Diasha is top 10 Mr. Olympia material. What he looks like right now, he looks good, he looks big, he is not as dry, as tight as he would be on the day of the show, of course. I think he got a little bit watery in the meantime, he probably got a lot of food in. You can see it also based on his stomach here, he's not controlling his midsection in this uh, uh, posing practice, but it's only practice, I, I know he will control it very well on the, on the stage, on the Mr. Olympia stage. So, uh, the conditioning is good, you can see right here also from behind, like, he is shredded. He is all the way in, like he is completely peeled. Uh, it's all about how fresh he can show on that stage. I don't know if he can bring his absolute best because he competed three times uh, recently, like week to week, back to back. I mean, he did Italy, Spain, and then France. So three shows, and I think every time he competed was worse than the time before. And Mr. Olympia is only in two weeks. So can he peak the way he peaked at the first show? I don't know, I don't think so. I don't think he's gonna be at his absolute best on the Mr. Olympia stage. Maybe he will, maybe actually the reason why he wasn't at his best for the last two shows was because he was saving his body to peak again for the Mr. Olympia. Maybe that's the reason. If that's the case, then yeah, he can peak. And if he's at his 100% once again, if he peaks right, I know his conditioning is spot on. But if he brings the, the, the right fullness and he brings good presentation, like controlling the midsection, he really kills it on that stage, top 10. I think top 10 is realistic. And yeah, I would say somewhere around that 10th spot. And that would be a huge achievement for Nathan. I think this season he does look his best ever, and his best placement on the Mr. Olympia stage was 7th. It was 2018, and he didn't really beat that many great bodybuilders that year. I think all the great bodybuilders that competed that year were ahead of him. So it wasn't like the most stacked lineup this year. The lineup is gonna be super, super stacked. So 10th would be an enormous success for Nathan, uh, and I think he can do it. Yeah, I think he has like bigger chances than Regan, who beat him at Spain. Uh, once again, if they are both spot on, I would definitely go rather with Nathan, because he's shredded, he's bubbly, he's complete, very complete. He has that mature, grainy look. So once again, it all depends on how well he peaks. So once again, if he does a good job, top 10, in my opinion. Well, since I mentioned uh, his, let's say, his rival, uh, probably the most controversial uh, victory this year, uh, Regan Grimes, when he won that Spain show against uh, Nathan Diasha, uh, here is a physique update of Regan Grimes uh, right now. Even though he said he won't be posting any physique updates, I mean, here he's not really in the pose, it's just a little short video, but you can get an idea what his physique looks like. And he looks good, but can we expect him to bring something, like, new? Can he show up looking super duper shredded for the Mr. Olympia? Because he wasn't really that conditioned for those two shows he did, Italy and Spain. I mean, should he be completely shredded? Sure, I would like to see him completely in shape, but is he gonna bring that? I don't think so. Why? Because his coach is Milos Harchev. And Milos is not one of those coaches who will bring their clients completely peeled by any cost. No, he talked about his 
very often. Like he talks about Samson Dauda, who is around 300 pounds on the stage, like 297 or so. He was at the Arnold, and he could be like 270, peeled to the bone, shredded glutes all the way in. He could do that, but would that be the best look for Samson? That's the question. And Milos doesn't think so. He believes that, you know, sacrificing some of that condition for size, for fullness, is often worth it in open bodybuilding. And I think I can agree with that. So here you can see Regan, he definitely wasn't in a great shape. This is not great conditioning. But he did look enormous on that stage. He probably dwarfed even Nathan. He was probably the biggest guy on that stage. And if he went all the way in, like if he was completely shredded, he would have to die down and die down and like lose a lot of pounds, probably like 20 pounds or so to be completely shredded. And if he did that, like he would be peeled, but he would be too small, especially for the Mr. Olympia type of competition. So I'm not expecting Regan to bring some crazy level of conditioning. He's probably going to be as conditioned as he was at those two shows. Maybe this time around they will, I don't know, like bring better peak, a little bit better peak, maybe better dryness, better fullness, maybe better presentation, I don't know. But I'm not expecting like something completely different. And so if he shows up the way he did at that last show, where will he place? In my opinion, I don't have him in my top 10. Best case scenario, top 15, and that's a great success, if he does that, that's amazing, especially today, in this crazy lineup. But whatever you guys think, you can tell me down below in the comment section. Alright, next we got a physique update of Brandon Curry, and it seems like people are changing their prediction lately, very often, after seeing all these physique updates of Brandon Curry, and I gotta say, I'm probably one of them. Like, I thought this guy is gonna be out of that top five, you know, probably top six. But right now, after seeing all these physique updates and the way his conditioning is improving at the rate that it is improving, it seems like we're about to witness probably the best version of Brandon Curry so far. Now, because of his legs, I can't say that this guy is gonna win. I can't say that. In that top 5, top 6, his legs are definitely the smallest, the worst, and they are pretty bad for his upper body. You can't really see that from the side shots, like here. In the side shots, his legs are looking good. In the back poses, they're decent, but in the front poses, it doesn't look very good. So because of that, he probably can't win the Mr. Olympia. This right here is his 2019 Mr. Olympia version, where he won the Mr. Olympia. And this is probably his best look. Maybe Arnold Classic 2019 is even better. But yeah, he won the Mr. Olympia right here. And as you can see, he did look pretty good. He looked pretty sick. I mean, you could say that that was one of the weakest Olympia lineups in, in like the last decade or two. But still, like he was the best on that day and he did look pretty good. So if he brings something similar to this, maybe with a little bit better conditioning, let's say. How high can he place? I mean, his upper body is really really good it's really symmetrical it has a really good shape it's very very complete but some of those guys in that top six have like really good legs and they're probably gonna expose brandon in that area quite a bit like Hari japan like samson dauda uh, derek lansford today as well you could say nick walker too especially from behind so it's gonna be really tricky for him to like beat those guys because of that body part but he will probably stay in the top five i don't see Andrew jack beating him now the way he looks with this conditioning and with this like fullness roundness size yeah i think he's pretty safe in that top five there in the top five you guys tell me and have you guys forgot about this guy tony o'burton who just posted this physique update and it seems like he is bringing something scary like he's bringing something really good and you guys probably remember we used to call this guy like a new Dexter Jackson, smaller Dexter Jackson, because there are certain similarities, and he is really sharp, he is really round, like crazy round and bubbly, like he has that plastic look, he looks just, you know, weird, like crazy, very, very impressive. Uh, he's a smaller guy, he comes from 212, I think he's like maybe 220 on stage now, so he's not really the biggest guy, but with his shape, with this roundness, fullness, bubbliness, and with his conditioning as well, 
he can also be a top 10 threat. I can see him in that top 10 potentially. What do you guys think? Well, whatever you think, you can tell me down below in the comment section. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more stuff like this. And if you want to support me, there is the link down below. You can buy any of those collab supplements. But make sure to use the code EVAN for 50% discount. And that's how you can help me and support this channel. Thank you guys so much. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.